Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie Jane, and today I'm going to be taking a break from making videos on repeating numbers. Because I just started a new job, and I'm very tired and unprepared to continue that today. Uh, however, next weekend, I'm sure I'll find the time to pick that up again. So today, uh, it's going to be another relaxing day, another uh, unboxing video. And because it is spring, finally, uh, we're going to be unboxing the Botanical Inspirations Oracle Deck mm. by, and here we go, where I murder another poor innocent creator's name, Lynn Araujo. I spelled A-R-A-U-J-O. So you tell me, <laughs> you tell me how to pronounce that. But yeah, we're going to break into this today and... It just looks so happy, so bright and happy and appropriate for the spring. So I'm really looking forward to breaking into this deck next month. Maybe even if I can uh, get used to it in time, incorporate it into April or May's uh, Patreon video. If you're new to this channel, I do videos on Patreon once a month. They are numerology readings, essentially, and I go through everyone's uh, birthdays and I basically explain what you're facing this month. Uh, but not only that, I look at things from a broader perspective, what the world's going through at this time. And then at the end of the video, I pull a card for all my patrons. I'm really happy that I started to incorporate oracle cards into my readings and I hope that I eventually get into enough of a routine and learn enough about how I can uh, kind of piggyback this off of my numerology readings to a point where I could even give readings on, on here for like the life path numbers for example. But one thing at a time, I got a lot of big projects going on right now. I just started it at, you know, a job. So, but yeah, so if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon account. I also give numerology uh, readings on Etsy. And I'm so sorry for the long introduction. I'm sure you're impatient and you just want to like get to the deck. So excuse me while I take time to take the cellophane off and uh, show you guys you know, what this is all about, so, yeah. So this box has like a very satisfying papery texture to it, like a, a matte finish, so to speak, and then it opens up like this, and it's just so pretty. It feels like a tea party in, in a little box. <laughs> and you have this cute little blue ribbon to lift it up. So this is the presentation of this. Ooh. And then it comes with this little guidebook, but inside there is this pouch, this pretty light blue pouch. Oh, and then the cards. And let's check this out and see what this is. The Secret Language of Flowers. All right, so this is really cool. This is just like a little pamphlet on a flower and their keyword. So this is like a really cool way to learn about like the the spiritual meaning of flowers, which I really like. I love everything in the plant kingdom as well as the animal kingdom and anything nature. So I love stuff like this. Here, for example, white roses, new start in wisdom. Lily, majesty and virtue, bellflower, gratitude, so on and so forth. So that's really cool. I like this. Put that aside. And then we have the guidebook. I'm just going to take a quick look at this. It's really nice because you have like a picture, what it is, and then the description, the symbolism, and the inspirational message. Oh, that's weird. We opened up to Bellflower. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find any spreads or anything that you guys might be interested in. Looks like there's some three-card readings in here. 
Uh, that's that's most of it. It's pretty straightforward. So far, so good. We'll go back to this after the cards when we pull a card. Uh, but excuse me again while I take the cellophane off. I just love getting a new deck. It feels really special. Um, it just... If, to me, it's it's like a little bit like self care, but the thing is that you don't you don't need you don't need all this stuff. You don't need like oracle decks after oracle decks after oracle decks to be a spiritual person and to practice you know divination and to grow. It's just it's a it's a fun thing to do. It's it's like play. You know, it's a it's like a way to be spiritual and playful at the same time. Okay, so yeah, this is a lot like a tea party. <laughs> um, the back looks like this. Here you have it. And let's just do a flip through. Oh, here we go. About the illustrator, Pierre Joseph Ritt, R-E-D-O-U-T-E. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah, 1759 to 1840, wow. He was born to a Flemish family of decorative painters. A young man, he went to Paris, where he began painting the flowers of the royal gardens. His detailed etchings caught the attention of botanists who taught him more about the anatomy of plants and artists, who introduced him to a new watercolor technique for illustrating flowers. Uh, Marie Antoinette hired him to decorates the walls of her place okay i'm just going through this quickly because i don't want this uh this video to be too long he became the most famous and sought after flower painter in europe in the night in the 1790s okay yeah and this just goes into more details that's really cool that's really cool that it there's this this uh vintage aspect to these cards in this way it's extremely unique and definitely adds like a whole new life to my collection so already i'm very happy so let's just do a, a flip through now we have violet faithfulness and modesty Maybe if I do this, like cover part of my body, you can see it better. The flowers are more vibrant than I thought that they were going to be on these cards. It looked it looked pale in the pictures. And it might even look really pale in this camera. But it's not. The flowers are very delicate and very beautiful and vibrant. Tulips. It's a great deck if you like keywords. Dangerous pleasure. Ooh. <laughs> what happens when you pull this one? Okay. Uh, Trumpet Gentian. Gentian. I'm going to learn so much about flowers because I know nothing. I know nothing about flowers. It's a learning experience too. It's not just something to play with. Sweet pea. It's just such, it's so relaxing. Like I feel uh, like a certain level of peace, but I also feel really classy. <laughs> um, it's hard to explain. It's just, it's a, it's a delight. It, this deck is a delight. Sacred Lotus. Yellow Rose. I... I think if you're an empath and you like nature, you're just connected to the seasons and you're just, you're going to want spring stuff when it's springtime. You're going to want summer stuff when it's summertime. And so I really like that there's this kind of variety out there for us. Red Rose, hidden secrets. I could see that for Red Roses. Pink Rose. Grace and sweetness. Primrose, youthful love. A 
Flox. That's like one of my favorite characters on on the newer Star Treks. Um, I mean, now there's new, really brand new Star Treks, but I mean like not the movies, but the series. I don't know if it's spelled like that though, but I wonder if they, if they got it from that. <laughs> Peony. Prosperity and Compassion. I'm really excited to pull a card for you guys today. I feel like it's going to be good. Pansy. Some Alice in Wonderland stuff right there. Sweet thoughts. Victory and Conquest. Mestrudium. I want a garden now. <laughs> Morning glory. I want the time to garden. <laughs> Mangolia. I want a friend with like a garden and a homestead. So first of all, I can learn how to do all this stuff. And second of all, I can visit them and have a good time. <laughs> and they're, and they're awesome. Beautiful uh, garden, but not just not just flowers, like, I, I think that if you're spending so much time on, on working on something like a garden, it's like half of it should be something you can eat, not just flowers. And then if you do have flowers, like, pick, pick flowers that will help keep out pests and then pick flowers that are easy to take care of and just kind of, like, do their own thing every year. And you just, like, there's just, you know, regular maintenance with them. At least that's just my take on it because I'm, you know, there's just so much in life that we have to do already. All right, so we're like well through the deck here. I accidentally almost show, uh, showed you all the cards. So truthfulness, oh no, sorry, thankfulness for understanding. This is the last one I'm going to show you. Let me know what you think. Now I'm going to shuffle the deck considerably and then pull a card for you guys and ask that whoever is watching right now gets the message that they're meant to receive. All right, so this is really cool. You guys got two cards. They, they're they next to each other in the deck, but they, they came flying out. So whenever that happens, I'm just gonna, you know, go with that. And you got Amaryllis and Anemone Windflower. It says anticipation, but also determination and creative achievement. So these two, I can see how they go together very well. Uh, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. So this is, I think, about being in a flow state where it's like the one creative thing leads to an, the next creative thing to the next creative thing. So it's like you just have an infinite resource uh, within creativity, within your projects, and so it's not like something that you do and then that's it. You mean you run out of that. It's like just being in that flow state and always welcoming the next thing. And then this is anticipation. So this could be like things are really going well finally. Or, uh, you know, you're getting to that flow state and now there's this anticipation for what's to come. I felt like an arrow pulled back and ready to be launched into something big. So that's this is a really cool card to pull. So let's go to the guidebook so we get an example of what that's like in this deck. So Amaryllis, the symbolism, as we said, determination and creative achievement. Uh, according to legend, Amaryllis was a love-struck maiden who had to get creative in order to gain the affection of the handsome shepherd who was only interested in his flowers. In desperation, she pierced her own heart leaving a path of blood droplets to his front door. God. <laughs> After 30 days, the droplets turned into stunning scarlet flowers. I really like these kinds of symbolisms, like, or this kind of symbolism, I should say. Uh, in fact, this reminds me of a short story by Oscar Wilde called The Fisherman and His Soul. Check that out. It's really good if you like to read. Uh, the shepherd was so taken with the flowers, 
He fell in love with the Amaryllis and her heart was healed. Okay. The Amaryllis has come to be associated with pastoral poetry. To the Victorians, the winter blooming Amaryllis was a symbol of determination that was often given to artists to inspire their creativity. That's awesome. So the inspirational message it says is, when the Amaryllis appears, it means your muses have blessed you with their inspiration. Fulfill your creative destiny and your achievements will be recognized and rewarded. Another really good thing to look at, um, look at is uh, creativity through the lens of Elizabeth Gilbert, the author of um, her famous book and now movie that has been out forever, like Eat, Pray, Love. And she's written a bunch of other things, so I'm sorry that's the only example I have. But she's written a lot of cool books on creativity. The one that I read was on Big Magic, and I love her idea of what creativity actually is. And it's in her in her perspective, it's it's like what the I think Greek Romans thought of as creativity which was a, their genius was the word that they used for it and it was something that visited them it wasn't something inherent in their own body that was creating them but it's like like a, an idea that chose them it's like an external muse and that's that's to them that was their genius read her book <laughs> or watch her her videos it explains it much better than i could but that's what this reminded me of so that's really cool, I like that. So let's go on to the other card that we pulled for you guys, which was uh, Anemone Windflower, Anticipation. This one right here. It says, uh, the intricate and aptly named flower, meaning daughter of the wind, has inspired poets and artists poets and artists, sorry, <laughs> throughout time. The anemone, I'm assuming is how it's pronounced, flower, closes up its petals at nights and when rain is on the way. Cool. Uh, perhaps this is why the Victorians associated the flower with both fading hope and expectation. Like the gentle breeze it is named after, the eagerly awaited bloom returns again, the lovely anemone is one of the first signs of spring, so it aptly relates to anticipation. When others begin to lose hope, you sense bright possibilities on the horizon. Uh, like the daughter of the wind, you eagerly anticipate the changes and challenges of each new dawn. So holy cow, that is really an awesome message to receive. I'm very happy with this deck. I want to incorporate it in my in my Patreon videos now. I'm going to try to do that. So this was really awesome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching this video. If you're new to this channel, uh, subscribe, comments below if you know what you think about this deck or if you have this deck, how this has been working out for you. And uh, also, I do requested videos just to make sure that I'm actually creating content that you guys want. So as long as it is related to stuff that I usually post on this channel, uh, you know, please leave it down in the comments below what you would like to see out of this. And now I'm going to put this in this adorable little blue pouch that it came with. Look at how dainty and beautiful this is. I love this deck. But yeah, thank you again all so very much for watching. I love you all. I hope you're having a good week. And uh, take care. I'll see you all soon. So bye.